Mr. Pierre Girard comes to the medical clinic for shortness of breath he has been suffering from for four to five days. There are no secretions, but he complains of a sharp pain on his right side. After taking the user's medical history, the nurse carries out a physical examination of his respiratory system. Hello. Hello. My name is Maria Hernandez. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? I'm Pierre Gerard. I was born on April 5th, 2002. What seems to be the trouble? I have a difficulty breathing and I have a pain on my right side. Okay. Before going forward with the physical examination, the nurse must take the user's medical history to help with her diagnosis. This evaluation is essential in order to collect objective data, enabling the nurse to make an assessment and guide her intervention. Okay, now can you please sit here on the examination table and remove your shirt? I'm going to check your respiratory system. Perfect. The four physical examination stages are inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. During the pulmonary examination, palpation is not easy to achieve. It is used to detect a mask or pleural effusion. In this situation, palpation will not be used. During the physical examination of their respiratory system, the user must remove some clothing. Men can just remove their shirt, but women can put on a gown which can be lifted and lowered as needed while preserving the user's modesty. During the chest exam, the nurse stands behind the user to examine the posterior and lateral surfaces of the thorax. Then, she can repeat the same procedure at the front, thus avoiding unnecessary back and forth movement. The first step of the physical respiratory examination is inspection. To that end, the nurse checks the skin tone and the user's position when breathing. She then assesses the shape and morphology of the rib cage. She compares the anteroposterior diameter with the transverse diameter, checks the neck, trapezoid, and abdominal muscles. This first step allows detecting indicators of respiratory trouble or degradation of the respiratory condition. Certain anomalies, such as the use of accessory muscles, cyanosis, tripod position, and others are indicators of the user's respiratory condition. The physical respiratory examination continues with palpation. Here, the nurse assesses the user's thoracic expansion and tactile thrill. So now I'm going to check your lung expansion. So when I say go, please take a deep breath through your mouth. For thoracic expansion, the nurse places her warmed hands on the sides of the rib cage at the level of dorsal vertebrae 9, D9, or 10, D10. She then slides her hands together so as to pinch some skin between her thumbs. Perfect. Now take a deep breath through your mouth. When the user takes a deep breath, the thumbs slide apart symmetrically, which is normal. Asymmetrical expansion can be an indication of serious atelectasis, pneumonia, rib trauma, rib fracture, or pneumothorax. Perfect. Now, every time you feel my hand on your back, can you please say the number 33? 33. During the palpation, the user assesses tactile thrill using the tips of her fingers or ulnar edge of her hand. This way, she assesses the user's vocal vibrations. Tactile thrill on the user's back is done at five positions on each side symmetrically. 
Vibrations may vary from one person to another, but should be identical on either side. Some health issues can cause an increase or decrease in tactile thrill, as the case may be. Okay, now I'll examine your lungs. So put your hands on your knees and lower your head a little. When you feel the stethoscope on your skin, take a slightly deeper breath than normal through your mouth. And if you start to feel dizzy, you can stop and tell me. We'll take a break and start again when you feel better. Okay. For pulmonary auscultation, the nurse uses the diaphragm of the stethoscope. She locates the apex of the lung at the level of vertebral apophysis C7 and goes downward symmetrically to the base of the lung in the area of D10 to be able to compare the sounds on either side. She finishes laterally from the armpit down to the seventh or eighth rib. The auscultation sequence is done at nine points on either side. The nurse needs to listen to a full breath at each location to be able to tell between normal and abnormal or added sounds. During the procedure, she makes sure the user does not hyperventilate or faint. Okay, so uh, we are done with the back side, so now we'll do the front. Once the posterior respiratory examination is completed, the nurse carries out the same sequence at the front of the user with a few additions in terms of inspection and palpation. Did you notice anything abnormal? Well, I'll finish the examination first, then I can tell you if I find anything. Perfect. From the front side, the nurse observes the facial expression, skin color, and the posture taken by the user during respiration. She also assesses the configuration of the thoracic cage to check the orientation of the ribs and the coastal angle. She examines the neck muscles, the trapezoids, and the intercoastal muscles. As it was the case with the examination of the backside, this step enables to pinpoint respiratory difficulty or the deterioration of respiratory status. Certain abnormalities, such as the usage of secondary muscles, cyanosis, the tripoid position, or breathing with pinched lips, among others, provide clues to the respiratory status of the user. Okay, so we'll repeat the same procedure as the back. So when I tell you, can you please take a deep breath through your mouth? Perfect. During the frontal palpation, the nurse assesses the user's thoracic, tactile thrill and capillary refill. For thoracic expansion, the nurse puts her warmed hands on the sides of the rib cage with her thumbs placed laterally at the coastal margin, pointing towards the xiphoid appendix. She then slides her hands to pinch the skin between her thumbs and asks the user to take a deep breath through the mouth in order to check for symmetrical expansion of the lungs. Okay, now uh, let's continue. So can you please say the number 33 when I put my hand on your chest? Thirty-three. During palpation, the nurse assesses the user's tactile thrill using the tips of her fingers or ulnar edge of her hand. In this way, she can assess vocal vibrations. Tactile thrill on the user's front is done at four positions on each side symmetrically, being careful not to touch the breast tissue if the patient is a woman. Vibrations may vary from one person to another, but should be identical on either side. 
Some health issues can cause an increase or decrease in tactile thrill, as the case may be. Okay, so I will now perform an auscultation. So when you feel the stethoscope on your skin, please take a deep breath through your mouth. Sure. Frontal auscultation is done symmetrically at five points following the mid-clavicular line. The nurse must first palpate the sternal angle to locate the second intercostal space. Auscultation begins at the apex of the lung from the subclavicular region to the second intercostal space and all the way down to the base of the lungs around the sixth or seventh rib symmetrically to be able to compare the sounds on either side. For women, the stethoscope should not be placed directly on the mammary tissue, but on the chest wall, moving it delicately. The nurse needs to listen to a full breath at each location to be able to tell between normal and abnormal or added sounds. You can put your shirt back on and move to the chair. So um, what I've been able to find is that you seem to have a respiratory tract infection. So I will give the information to the doctor who will come to see you shortly, establish a diagnosis and prescribe appropriate treatment. All right. Perfect. Take good care. Thanks. At the end of the physical examination, the nurse makes notes of her findings and prepares an assessment statement.